Today is a brief review of the MRI of the cervical spine in a 45-year-old woman with multiple sclerosis. This is not my patient. I got these images from radiopedia.org, and if you want to take a look for yourself, I'll certainly include the link in the description below. And we don't know any of the clinical details of this woman, but I suspect she's in the middle of a relapse with weakness of the limbs as she has multiple enhancing lesions, as I'll show in just a moment. So I'll show a little of the normal anatomy along with the multiple sclerosis lesions. So what you're looking at are T2 sagittal images, so we're sort of looking at slices like this, and you can see in the center this is the spinal cord, which is normally dark on T2, and you can see the multiple bright T2 bright lesions. Uh, this is the brain stem, this is the pons, and this is the medulla. This is the cerebellum involved in coordination of movements. This is the basilar artery, which feeds the brain stem. Here you can see the vertebrae, or bony masses, that support the spinal column. And here you can see the discs, or cushions, in between. And just to show you the different levels, this is actually C2 and the odontoid process that extends up. And this, these two structures, are part of the ring that forms C1. And this anatomical arrangement allows you to turn your head side to side like that. And so you can see the vertebrae C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and then this is T1, T2, T3, T4. So even though this is an MRI of the cervical spine, we can see some of the thoracic vertebrae. And if we direct our attention to the multiple sclerosis lesions, you can see there's one here at C2, and another here kind of patchy at C4, and then there's another one down at about T3. And if I kind of scroll a little bit, you can see another one here down at 2, 3, 4, 5, C5, C6 area, and then down at C6 and C7. And just to look at some of the other structures, these are the spinous processes extending backwards, and you can sort of touch those bony prominences on the back of your neck. And here is the fatty subcutaneous tissue. Uh, now, now we're going to look in cross section. So you're sort of looking at slices through the neck like this. And here you can see the spinal cord surrounded by normal cerebrospinal fluid, which is normally bright. And we're very high up, so you can see the teeth here. We're sort of at the level of the jaw. And these are the parotid glands, which create saliva. And these are the masseter muscles involved in chewing. And just to kind of orient you, these are the splenius capitis muscles that sort of allow you to extend your neck. And if we go a little bit further down, we can see these are the trapezius muscles that allow you to uh, lift your shoulders. Here is the airway, or trachea, through which you breathe into the lungs. And here is the esophagus, where food goes into your stomach. It's sort of compressed naturally when there's not food in it. And around the trachea is the thyroid gland. And sort of in front of that, this bright structure is the thyroid cartilage, also known as the Adam's apple, which you can touch in front of your neck. Just to show you a few other things, uh, these are the submandibular glands, which also create saliva. And if we go a little bit further down, we can see the lungs. Now we're in the thoracic area and the heart in the middle. And this is the aortic arch. And if we follow the blood vessels, we can see this is the right common carotid artery and the right jugular vein. This is the clavicle, the bone you can touch here. And this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle that allows you to turn your head side to side. Now, if we focus in a little bit on the spinal column, we can see this is the vertebral body, and extending backwards is the spinous process, and this is the lamina. And so if you have like a lumbar laminectomy, the surgeon cuts through and removes this bone in order to remove the, the herniated disc. Now, you can see this is the spinal cord, and it should be dark, but you can see these bright multiple sclerosis lesions. So the way the anatomy of the spinal cord works is the back of the spinal cord contains the sensory fibers involved in vibration and fine touch sensation. The lateral column contains fibers that relay temperature and pain information along with the descending motor fibers, and then the front of the spinal cord contains the spinal motor neurons that go directly to the muscles. And so as we'll see on the next image, this individual has multiple enhancing lesions, and so for instance, this is a, an active lesion on the right lateral column that's very high up at around C2, and so this could cause weakness in the right arm and right leg, which is very likely that this individual has at the time that the scan was done, although it's difficult to 100% predict how strongly the lesions will correspond with the deficits. If we go a little bit lower down, there's another lesion on the left side of the spinal column that looks active. 
uh, this one right here. So this is in the left lateral column, but it's a little bit lower down. And so this individual may have weakness in the left leg corresponding with this lesion, but it may be less severe than the weakness of the right side of the body. Now, if we look at the T1 images with contrast, we can see that many of the images take up the dye. And the idea is that when there's active inflammation in multiple sclerosis, there's a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, and the dye sort of seeps into the lesions and makes it look very bright. So you can see that this lesion on the left side of the C2 spinal cord looks very bright, and it is enhancing. And then there are also patchy lesions down here, and then this other smaller lesion on the left side of the spinal cord also looks active. And so this individual has multiple simultaneous enhancing lesions of the cervical spine. If you have any questions about any particular anatomical structure, please post in the comments and put the time stamp, and I'll try to explain it to the best of my ability. And if you have any general comments or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.